I, I think networking is super important. I went into some local uh, meetings here in Europe and I find this effective and much less exhausting. What are your growth plans look like? Are we going platinum? Is platinum on the horizon? <laughs> in the market, just if you look to hire talent, it's far easier to hire a bunch of good developers than to hire a bunch of good Atlassian Jur administrators. Shout out to our sponsor, NASA, not another standup app. Maintain project momentum after your daily standup by flagging issues for easy detection and follow up. This is going to help you resolve your blockers more efficiently. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Summer of Atlassian. Today I have Rena from Radby. And Rena, you are new to this channel, but you're a longtime friend now at this point, right? And yes. so, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better. And a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Usually I have to share the stage with my co-hosts. And today we get to just have a casual conversation, a one-on-one -on -one with Rena. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, to have me on the show. It's a, it's an honor. Um, I must congratulate you for being so courageous and brave to take this 100 days summer sequence it's a marathon. How it, how do you it, sustain that? And you, we are recording that at your six a.m. Uh, six a.m. Fourth of July, etc. So how, how what's the plan? How do you sustain yourself? So, so so I'll tell you this much. Um, one Atlassian made me do this, <laughs> ah, and the okay. reason Atlassian made me do this is because as I was planning out my my videos, right? Um, I noticed you know Atlassian's changing the UI. Alaskan is going to change the way Jira looks. And a lot of my videos are old at this point. They're two years old, over two years old. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's time. I, I'm so much wiser in the world of Jira and Atlassian now. And those videos, I just, they're just old, right? They're just, they're the old way of me thinking, the old UI, the old Jira. I'm like, let's just do the new one. Well, I was going to say, let's just redo the videos. Yes. And then Alaskan's like, Oh, by the way, we're changing the whole UI. And I'm like, well, great. I don't want to redo the videos in the summer and then redo them again in the fall when they re-update the UI. So I was like, so how can I talk about Atlassian without talking about Atlassian? <laughs> so enters the Summer of Atlassian's interview series. But yeah. this is not about me, Rena. This is about you. Let's get to know you more. <laughs> okay. So, so, who are so, you? so tell me, <laughs> where, you where should we start? Let's start at the beginning when you were a, a wee lad, little girl. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Let, let's talk about how did you get into the Alaskan ecosystem? How did that journey look like? Yes. So, so happy to tell about that because it's been a while already. Even that part was already a while. Uh, so before being the CEO of Radby, which is what I do for the last uh, 12 years or so, I was a co-founder of a medical device company. So it's was basically a, a company that tried to uh, bring to the market a sophisticated imaging analysis for ultrasound. And we focused on uh, different organs uh, and uh, we used AI basically before AI became a fashion, a fashionable <laughs> thing that uh, it, did, it, it was today. And in that company, we had the development team, sure, and uh, we used Atlassian, we used Jira, and we used the uh, later on Confluence as well for all the normal things. And, and that is before Atlassian and Jira were 20, what, 21, 22 years old? How, how old are they now? Yes. When yeah, they were, basically before they were cool. <laughs> bef <laughs> and before they were mainstream, maybe I should say it like that. Okay. Uh, when they were still very, very new, <laughs> but already up and coming, and uh, and at that uh, at that instance, at that uh, context, uh, we also because we were a medical technology company, we needed to comply with different standards and regulations, do submissions to FDA and so on. So our development team had this brilliant idea to use Jira to manage quality and compliance related processes instead of taking 
a traditional third party, another tool that would do that. So, and that basically worked really, really well. And when that uh, adventure in my life finished and it was time to move on, I identified that there's basically a, a use case there that goes beyond what we did just in that particular uh, um, company. I can actually make other medical technology and pharmaceutical companies use Atlassian within regulated uh, uh, processes. And uh, that was kind of the core idea for Radby when we just started, and we started as a solution partner. Or I would say we started as someone who gave consultancy around Atlassian. We were not the solution partner yet. It took like, I think, four years of courtship from my part to Atlassian to convince <laughs> them <laughs> that they, we were allowed to become a solution partner. <laughs> Atlassian plays hard to get sometimes. Very hard. But... It taught me it taught me an important lesson about business in general, and that is that business happens not when it's convenient for one side, but only when it is convenient for both sides. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was knocking at that door of Atlassian, and they, their different uh, reps that handle this matter, did not give me a no. They just kind of ignored or waited or asked question and then did not return with any response. So I, I never heard a no, but I never heard a yes. Yes, but <laughs> but you you know already that if you don't hear a, a something, then it's a no, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and then at a certain moment, they appointed a channel manager here in the UK, and one of his tasks was to increase the footprint of Atlassian Solution Partner in the UK. And in that moment, there's Rina. I happened to be, I happened to be already there in the line, and this was a quick win. He could immediately, let's say, act. So, that's, so that's the echoes the power of persistency, right? I think too many people, especially the, the newer generation. You, you, you hit a wall, you hit something hard, and you give up. <laughs> you give up way too too early. And I think um, I've, I've, I've struggled with rejection. And um, I've been learning that after that first initial rejection, the second time you ask tends to increase to a yes. <laughs> and I think a lot of people <clears throat> get scared at that first no. So. Absolutely. And, and I think this is such an important lesson to any negotiation you have in, in life that no is a lot of times the start of a conversation. It doesn't, meaning I don't mean it in a way that a no necessarily will lead to a yes, but a no can lead you to a discussion that will increase your understanding of why the no is a no. So don't take it personal. It's never, right. never <laughs> about you. It's more about them. Yeah, I've I've heard it. Uh, a no right now usually means just not right now. Exactly. Right, and and there's ways where you can, like you said, right, take the feedback, adapt, grow, mold, like just change what what you need to do to hopefully eventually turn into a yes. But but it does take a special type of character to consistently show up year in your case year after year after year until it becomes a yes. That means you really you really gotta want this right at that point. Yes. Yes, and but I think that this was also the case because I was pretty convinced that uh, there's a real use case, and I also saw the business. The business was growing. So, having said that, I did not have the title of solution partner, but I managed to get projects, and I managed to get projects done, and we ma we managed to get paid for it. Yes, so so the solution partner thing was just an extra badge that would create a little bit more confident with some some of the folks that would uh, ask for us. But uh, it was not the the do or die for our business. And yeah. the fact that we did not have it did not kill the business. That was but, also important. But your business pivoted greatly, right? Like from creating medical devices to helping people with that lasting stuff, 
that's so that's so huge. no so for, from the medical device it's not the same business no so i know but that's why but it's a shift that's what i'm saying it's a big change to be because that's where you were right that's you were creating yes. these devices to this world but, but i i want to tell you uh, i'm by profession i'm a software engineer that's what i learned back in uh, Tel Aviv. This is when you were a wee lad little girl. <laughs> yes, yes. That's my, my title. And then I went in, uh, to, uh, to being a, a developer. Um, my first job, by the way, that's just an anecdote. I was, because a, a, I'm originally from Israel, I studied in Tel Aviv. And after the studies, I was recruited, recruited to the Israeli Air Force. And I was, that's my first development job. <laughs> yes. And then I, I did different things in the Israeli high-tech industry before I did this adventure of medical device. And each, almost each job was in another business context. And that's maybe the beauty of this profession. Not, not everybody appreciates because they say software engineer, for some people, for some people, software engineer is just this boring coding task that is always the same. Mm -hmm. But it's actually very different if you do it in different contexts. You study so many different business areas and different needs and different languages and different worlds. And in that way, a career in software engineering can be very varied, basically. Yeah, no, 100%. My, my, career, my background is in software engineering as well. And, and I started in defense here in the United States, very similar to you, right? And uh, <clears throat> but yeah, then one day I pivoted to to uh, basically oversized Roombas for cleaning WalMarts and airports and stuff. And that was a big shift. And that was like like it's one of those things where again, like you're exposed to this field, but then like all of a sudden, like you can take those skills to a lot of different fields and, and get a lot of different perspectives. And now I just now I just do Jira. <laughs> Absolutely. And you you, I think one of the reasons that you do Jira and you now do this channel like you are a, a hosting me on is is a little bit associated to the reason why I started rugby as the business that I started because when I was looking to start rugby um, I was looking to have a business of my own of our own so I'm not the only founder but we it's it's me and my husband basically like you and your wife wife <laughs> it sounds very familiar and, and one of the things that was important for me is that we can start a business without recruiting external funds. So be self-reliant from funding point of view and ownership point of view and tying ourselves to an ecosystem like Atlassian. And in a hindsight, I can say that we tied ourselves to a very growing and a successful uh, uh, ecosystem, but that's, of course, not only due to me, but it's just because Atlassian did so well. Yeah, I mean, you could have picked the uh, you well, you could have picked something like uh, that Clearcast, Clearcase, and Clearquest that were dying. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so there is always the element of luck. Yes, you you cannot not know that the things will develop so nicely. But for Atlassian, they did, and and that uh, helped us actually build that business in in the way that served what we wanted to do at, at this stage of the life. We wanted to be independent. We, we wanted to, to do meaningful work and uh, we wanted to do that without recruiting external funds. So a couple of questions that just come to mind and now that you said this, uh, and these are things that I've struggled in turning since we have a very similar background here, right? One, um, my wife and I, we've always been coworkers. So when I was at Boeing, she was at Boeing. When I was at Northrop, she was at Northrop, right? But we were very strategic. We were very strategic in the sense of we never worked on the same program. Mm -hmm. So if funding ever got cut for one program, <clears throat> we would one of us was at least to have a job, right? So the yeah. question I want to ask you is: You're in business with your with your significant other, with your spouse. All your income comes together from the same source. So how did you? What were those challenges? What were those conversations like with your with your husband when you were starting this out? Um, so that's already the second uh, venture that we do together. The first one was that medical technology company that we did. You were already successful with them. Uh, 
Yes, but um, uh, the, because, because the context is so dramatically different, it is different uh, because, as you said, pivoting from medical technology to this, and now this is a, it started like a consultancy business. Now it's both consultancy and a product. So the type of, of business, and it's not VC back, the other system, the other uh, uh, project was VC back. So it, there are many different things. And I think we as human beings are pretty different, me and my husband. Uh, so we can watch the same movie and come out <laughs> with totally different impressions. Yes. So, but but yes, it is. It is. Uh, there is this challenge that we we we. I will tell you what what is the strange thing about it for other people. So other people sometimes get. Uh, I don't want to say get it wrong, but I notice that sometimes people think that if they tell me something, then Dror also will know it automatically. Yes? So they assume like we are hearing the same things and experiencing the same things, and then suddenly they are surprised that we have different opinions. Yes? I don't know if it happens <laughs> to you. <clears throat> yeah, no. So so my wife helps us with the Jira life, right? And, and I see that all the time because Rodney or, or Bob will be texting in the group chat where the four of us, my wife, myself, and Ronnie and Bob are in. And and I am so busy during the day, right? Um, I just don't have time to keep up with the conversation all day. So I'll I'll pop in at the end of the day. And my wife has made a lot of decisions. <laughs> right? <laughs> She's made a lot of decisions and the, and the think, train has left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but I think I think so my wife and I have been working together for a very long time. Like, like I told you, right, we, we've been co-workers for a long time. And we met in school and <clears throat> my wife and I, we, we were the same major, the same, same, uh, same everything, right? Like we, we wow. have very similar same background. Story. Yeah. And so, so I guess maybe we have a lot of trust in each other, yes. right? Because I think, I think at this point we, we have spent so much time together, especially since COVID hit that we've been, <clears throat> we did like some numbers, right? We've been together for some like, I don't know, in the same room together or, or same environment for like some 30,000 hours at one point. It was like some crazy, crazy number that we were just like, we haven't separated. Like we we do everything together. We go to, she doesn't drive. So she doesn't have a driver's wow. license. Yes. So going out is a, a family thing, right? So we all go together out. And so anyway, so I think because we spent so much time together, she has learned to to look at questions and answer them the way I would. And wow. I think and I think it's easier for her though because I put out a lot of my information out. So she edits every video. So she's seen my critical thinking skills and how I would analyze the situation. Now the reverse can't be said. I mess it up all the time. I don't know if it's <clears throat> it might be the whole fact, you know, the male female type of thing. Like I just can't understand women <laughs> because right because women are a mystery to men, or it's just that maybe I need to pay more attention <laughs> to what yes, you said. Yes, I, I guess it's the second thing. <laughs> but but yeah, no, in general, um, it, it's an interesting dynamic that my wife and I have of being able to understand each other and or at least anticipate what we want to do. Mm -hmm. But it does, yes. it, I think I'm in a use, unique case, like I said, we, we've just been, we've had so much similarities in the way we were raised and the way we, we went to school and what we learned, how we learned it, because we had the same teachers, right? So we had the same wow. foundation uh, of like inspiration and like who molded our minds. So they're very similar. Yes, that's that's a uh, well. It's nice, and uh, I think what you mentioned there about trust—that's the most important thing. So uh, me and Andro can often have differences in opinion. But I eventually know that he totally has my back and the other way around. And that, that's a kind of really invaluable. But I think I think it's like, let's talk a little bit about co-founders, yeah. right? Because like with my wife, we when I'm doing this thing for Ape Tech, right? Because it's more her and me. Um, we challenge each other a little bit more. Right, we we po both passionately love it, but we're also married. So at the end of the day, 
we don't get to walk away from each other, right? Like we have to go. No, no, you you go to bed with the problems. Right. We, yeah, we go to the same room, project. we go to the same bed. Yeah, we're we're stuck with it the whole day, right? But versus like Ronnie and I and and Bob, right? Because again, we're co-founders there. When there's a difference of opinion there, I'm a lot more just whatever's the greater good. Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. in that case, like Bob is uh, 400 miles away from me and Rodney is like 2,000 miles away from me, right? So it's very different. It's a very different dynamic of that relationship with Bob and, and, and Rodney. I want to nurture more because I'm afraid, sure. uh, right? I'm afraid of that one's more brittle, right? That one can break yes. because we don't know each other as well. So it is more of a collaborative, cooperative effort of compromise. So like if, not hey, only that, has a... not only that, I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel that I demand from Dror much more and I'm able to be more uh, impatient, if I can say it, with him because I take him much more for granted than other people. As exactly right. as you say. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, right? So yeah, so we <clears throat> maybe... Yeah, maybe we're more emotional with our spouses as co-founders then, right? Because we can be, because you also sign a paper that says we're in it in, in the good or the bad. <laughs> it's an interesting thing. I, I always look at Nikki and Biro as like my inspirations for for like a, a couple co-founder and mm -hmm. obviously a, a huge success story from their selling last year. So I don't know. I, I do think it's hard though. I, I do think a lot of people usually have these very clear boundaries with their spouses yes. and there's a big division right like you do you i do me <clears throat> but and maybe it's just the way my wife and i've always since we got married right like it's been like hey we're in this together <laughs> um sure. i always i always find it super interesting we have a joint everything right we have a joint bank accounts joint everything and i was not not against and not nothing against anyone who doesn't have joint bank accounts but i always find it interesting that like like how you pay each other for like a rent, right? And I'm like, it, it just blows my mind because like, again, my, my wife and I, we have one of everything <laughs> and we just take <laughs> what we need. Yes, I, uh, I'm, I, we live like you describe that way. Yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> maybe let's get a little bit back to Radby here. So you mm -hmm. and your husband start this thing. What's the inspiration for the name? Ah, that's that's uh, much simple, much simpler. <laughs> so we, even though it was uh, some years ago, already then having a domain name where you can have the .com was hugely difficult. So I I spent like two or three days just trying to different names, different ideas, and. But my criteria was that I da wanted to have the .com. So anything that did not give me the .com was uh, banished, yes? And mm -hmm. I was so desperate that I ended up at rugby. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's a good name. I, I really like it. Yes, um. I think it, it works well in the sense that people remember it. It's easy for people to, to pronounce it, no matter what their culture is, meaning... Until today, I did not run into someone who was not able to say rugby. And uh, uh, we have the .com, so. <laughs> well, it, it would have been, um, I heard the story that Lululemon. Yes. Right, has all the L's in it, Lulu and Lemon. And they put the, the co-founder or the founder of Lululemon intentionally put all the L's because there's countries out there that can't pronounce the L's. <laughs> So yes, I, I heard that too. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but yes, I, I heard, heard it. Exactly. And Lululemon is, of course, a, a, a great brand. Very expensive, though, but a great brand. Yeah, no, it's just interesting, right? Like, I, I think I, I share this with a lot of people when I interview, right? I grew up in Southern California. And Southern California is a very diverse area. But the areas that I lived and grew up in is very predominantly Hispanic, right? Mm -hmm. okay. A lot, a lot of Hispanic. And then if you get deeper into like Los Angeles, like like where my wife grew up, it's even more extravagant. Like there's even more cultural boundaries, and you don't see a lot of diversity there. 
But where I grew up, I still had a little bit of diversity, but not a whole lot. There's a lot of Asian people in my my high school, but mostly mostly just a, still a, a pretty good diverse group of people. But living outside of Southern California, like the world is much more diverse, <laughs> right? And and I think <clears throat> when we look at like these international partners that we have and and friends now that we have. Never in a million years when I was starting up like Ape Tech would I have thought, is this going to resonate well with my audience in like Japan, <laughs> right? Like it's just not something that that came to my mind when I was coming up with the name. But now, now through this Atlassian ecosystem, it's such a global system, it's a global yes. community that that you, yeah, you do kind of want to be very mindful, right? It's it's something that should be top of mind. Like, hey, can the globe, the world pronounce this? <laughs> and what does it mean too, right? Because sometimes... Like Radby to me, it's something cheerful and joyful, but you want to be careful because sometimes you want to pick names that don't mean something bad, like in another country. <laughs> yes. So to be honest, I did not do a, a global survey to see if other people has meaning, but until today, no one was offended. No one. Nobody's was... been offended yet. <laughs> That's no, a good thing because no, in twenty twenty four, it's kind of hard not to offend anyone now. <laughs> yes, and what I find really sweet is that. Sometimes my customers call Radby, a, for example, when I set up, when we set up a system for them, it's a Jira system with some processes that we configure there. And they then they see, they say, a Radby system does this or that. Now it's not, <laughs> there's <laughs> nothing like a Radby system, but it's a system that we configure to them and they call it the Radby system. So that I think is, is pretty endearing. Nice. So we go from, again, medical devices to we're now helping people roll out Atlassian tools and products to you. I mean, we're looking at your shirt here, right, to an actual product that you make. What were these conversations and discussions like internally when you were so, figuring this out? So when uh, when you start a business in the Atlassian ecosystem, uh, in the first, at least for us, Initially, I was happy that we got projects, we got work, uh, everything seemed to be rolling nicely. And then you start thinking about the scale up. Huh? That's the magic word every business uh, wants, uh, wants to scale up. And there are several routes to do the scale up on the Atlas and uh, ecosystem. Well, now you can even be a, a, a content creator like like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you you could develop different types of business and for me the the thing that made the most um, appeal was to become a vendor on the marketplace and sell app or apps in plural yes mm -hmm. um so and that was basically a small pivot i say a small pivot because we never left and we are still a highly entangled or highly invested in our consultancy business. But for several years, basically, the consultancy business was the money maker. And a lot of the money that was made there was reinvested in developing apps to the marketplace and uh, trying out different things until uh, we have Jira Snapshot, which I'm happy to say is the one that gets a really good traction and uh, where we see the numbers going up uh, in all different uh, measures and, and will take us uh, to the scale up, hopefully, if we continue to do uh, to work correctly and so on. Nothing is guaranteed until it's not done, but the signs are there already. It's an interesting change, though, right? But a logical one that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think there's there's value in obviously you're building a brand with Radby, right? And uh, you guys are silver, right? Silver solution partner. Yes. Yeah. So so you build this brand, and people come to trust you from a so solution section, and then also now as you continue to grow your apps, they'll start to trust you from a from a product perspective too. So mm -hmm. what are your growth plans look like? Are we going platinum? Is platinum on the horizon? <laughs> uh so the the platinum for marketplace for sure it's uh, on the horizon. Let just uh, uh, need it's to get more traction. 
it's a matter of time and and not only time it's time and good work that we have to put in in it and so on uh, but there's no at the moment there's no plans to grow the solution partner business to be platinum so i um, really personally i i know that a lot of people in the market in the ecosystem has done it very beautifully i uh, don't see necessarily a, a big uh, passion in myself so to speak to grow a big platinum okay. solution partner business right. i uh, we are we are pretty small people who contact us know that uh, i will be supervising personally on each and every project that comes in and that works well for me I, i'm not it's okay let's say if if the app uh, does the scale up that's uh, that would be my my uh, dream comes true if i can say it like that for the business <clears throat> so but does that then channel in because of your software background like is this what you just enjoy more no so actually i i don't in in our app i don't have one line of code that no? i have <laughs> but, but, <clears throat> i mean you're developing something right maybe maybe well I, maybe i'm trying to get too psychology on you right but i'm just trying to figure out like what what drives you right because i like you i i, I see a lot of similarities with Irina, right like i hate the consulting part of of jira right like I'm I'm trying to figure out. I, I keep telling my brother-in-law, I would love to figure out a way how to earn money without talking to people. <laughs> like that would be my ideal business. <clears throat> and and even through like an app, like you still have to deal with people, but it's a little bit less one-on-one, -on -one, like everyday engaging, right? Like people install the app, they use the app, and as long as you build a good app, people will use it and maybe stay at bay, <laughs> right? And so, but but I think it it has to. I think having that software background, maybe deep down cognitively, you're like, this, this is my space. <laughs> so I want to say, I, I actually really like the consultancy uh, business and I like to work with my customers. What I less like is to mentor other consultants. So uh, in, in the projects that we do, um, so we have uh, we have customers all around the world. So back uh, to uh, the fact that we were we are a UK based uh, operation. Most of our customers are not in the UK, and and the reason that people from California or New York uh, or France co uh, choose to do a project with us and not with their local uh, solution partner is because they look for this very niche specialization of a, a, a consultancy that understands, for example, what is CFR 21 part 11? What is ISO 13485? What does computer system validation mean? All these uh, terminology that are not directly linked to JIRA, but give us this edge why this particular project lands with us and not with another uh, uh, solution partner. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I don't say that I'm uh, there is a very small group of people in the universe that knows that, but that's a fact. There is not a lot of expertise of people who can be Atlassian configurator, uh, have the business analysis uh, capability to do that in a space that is highly specialized like that. And so you can take someone who knows maybe to be a JIRA administrator or wants to learn to be a JIRA administrator, but it's a very long learning curve and it's a very big investment in another human being that eventually not necessarily stays with you, yes? Because you cannot, uh, there's no slavery. If, if someone comes, you train him for, uh, for a while, then you hit a, a point where there's not a lot of business or whatever, he will not stay or she will not stay, I don't know. So in, in that way, it's a very risky, I, I perceived it, I perceived this type of growth as a very risky growth. While as from the upside, there is a, a what, the, what we need in the team are very good developers. And I must say, it's a, everybody thinks that developers are a very, very precious commodity. Atlas and uh, administrators are more precious. I think <laughs> they are <laughs> much more uh, in the market. Just if you look to hire talent, it's far easier to hire a bunch of good developers 
than to hire a bunch of good Atlassian Jira. administrators. That is uh, such an interesting com- concept that you have, right? Because that's something that I've struggled with for, for the last few months. I'm getting ready to make some some bold moves here with my channel, right? Um, the YouTube aspect of it is one piece, right? But I am my wife and I, we're both software engineers, right? So as you might have guessed it, we're both working on an app, <laughs> right? But due to the popularity and just the nature of this channel, right? Uh, I get a, uh, every 90 days, it's something like 100, who, every every month it's 100,000 views on the channel. And every 90 days, it's 100,000 unique people that visit the channel. So it's a lot of people. Yes. Right. And um, so naturally, people ask me for help. <laughs> right. They're like, hey, Alex, can, can you help us yes. with, with so, the Jira so problem? So now you, you have your own billboard to advertise your talent. Right. But it the consulting aspect of it is not scalable. I mean, it is scalable in the sense that you can hire more people. But the but biggest there will not be you. Right. That's the part that I struggle with the most. It's just like, I, I don't know that I can trust somebody to do the job that like I would. Exactly. And that part there breaks it for me because people are trusting me when yes. they see the videos. But if I don't give them me, then am I cheating them? <laughs> like it's it's hard. So I don't, that's why it stops me. So this is why I'm like, I told my wife, I'm like, maybe I want to focus on scalable things, right? Like courses and training and and apps because that's scalable, right? That doesn't need my face to be successful in the front of it. Exactly, exactly. So from that reasoning, I thought that building an app will be scalable. And uh, hence we tried. So I can say that Jira Snapshots is our third app, uh, but the first two were learning experiences. So they are, (laughs) Everybody uh, needs that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and that's meaning if you come back to the beginning where I knocked on uh, on Atlassian's uh, door for four years, I, I had also the, the long experience with app. It's not like the first one was a hit. Uh, although we did, meaning in all cases, the ideas for the app, because how can you come up with an idea that will catch I find it very difficult just in a, a whiteboard to to uh, imagine something that w- people will need. We all all our ideas came from project work that we did. Right, that's and, what I was going to say. Like it should have been easy for you since you have the consulting part. Absolutely. That's usually where I get all my ideas is from helping people with their Jira problems, and I'm like, hey, Jira can't do this. Idea, Jira should do this. <laughs> yes. So Jira Snapshot came from uh, from actually the first first implementation, which has nothing to do with the implementation that is now on the marketplace. But uh, in terms of idea, it's basically the same idea. Came from a, a project where they said we actually have a script that takes data or a Python. I think it was a Python uh, job that ran every night or something like that that collect the data from Jira through the REST API or through the database, because we were still talking about server days. You could right. uh, actually yeah, get you can just grab it <laughs> from, yeah. from the database. And we put it into a Confluence page. Uh, why? Because eventually the Confluence page is the thing that we can share between with uh, all the different C-level stakeholders that needed to sign the list of requirements for the version, the test report for the version, the bug report, whatever, all those different reports that people in the industries I serve need to submit as part of their release documentation. And they discovered that having this Python script running overnight is not tenable because the person who wrote the script left the company, they need other criteria, There is no longer someone who maintains it. And it all became a big headache. And they wanted something that is is more robust. And that was the very first time that we did, uh, as part of the project, it was not an app at that stage, we did an implementation. And then I tried to, to suggest it or to offer it to other projects. And what I have seen is that 
Okay, so I uh, I then offered it to another uh, um, couple of projects, and it seemed to be like the pattern. Um, I mean, the core features, the core feature set that we had there was really solving other people's problems as well. And uh, uh, after I had three or four projects that got it as a project work, I said, okay, that's that's a good sign. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's, a, <laughs> yeah. there's a grain of something there. And then we basically rivet and everything because... Uh, it's a, one thing to deliver something as a project solution, and another thing is to put it on the marketplace and pass all the verification, the security, and also make it robust enough and stable enough and all the so so really make it a product. And uh, there we are. We have Jira snapshots both for data center and cloud, and that was meaning all the project work we did was for server. So. Sure, we we uh, first came out with a version for data center, but shortly after came out with a version for cloud because already at that stage when we did it like uh, two and a half years ago, it was clear that you need to have a footprint in cloud as well. And since yeah, then, no, we are obviously. actually <laughs> obviously now. Oh, I mean, it's obvious to look at it now and say, "Yep, this this is obvious." <laughs> um, and, and there, there is feature parity basically between the two installations. The That's tool. good. Yeah, uh, I think I I know a lot of companies, especially during the migration, right? They struggled because those apps weren't migration friendly. So so I'm assuming that having that feature parity is very critical for those migrations. Yes. So yes. I wanted to pivot a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. wanted to maybe get into some more. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if I want to use the word less interesting, but more personal to me. I think I think I'm more curious about this. But Saskia, can we talk about her? A little bit, yes. not not okay. <laughs> I, just, I when she first reached out to me, right? Like she was like, "Hey, Alex, um, Rena, she's our co-founder. She wants to meet up and like be on the Jira Life and stuff." Like, where did you find her? How did she come into your fold? Ah, so I uh, um, am always not always, but I um, consistently, <laughs> consistently, consistently. Uh, try to find people that uh, can help us in several, in certain domains. Mm -hmm. uh, so th the development team is a full-time development team because we have loads of work and, and, uh, and uh, uh, the budget to sustain them. But in some specific areas, we still don't have enough uh, justification to have a full-time full -time person to, to help. But, Still, I needed some help in marketing and communication. And actually, Saskia was not, I did not find her. I found someone else. And uh, this, uh, and the someone else, okay, I, uh, I be more. <laughs> it's coming specific. back. It's all coming back. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was looking for someone to help us in Germany. Because from the early interviews that we did and the early stages in the marketplace or the early analytics that we saw in the marketplace, we saw that the Germans really like Jira snapshots. And what I know about Germans is that they like also to be communicated to in German. Mm. And my German is not existing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, through the ecosystem we had one uh, one person who really liked uh, Jira snapshots and who was from Germany so I asked her if she knows someone who can help us and uh, she recommended her friend and her friend eventually could not do that because of a certain accident and I asked her and she recommended Saskia so you see it's a whole chain of, of basically <laughs> serendipity working your network uh, right. to find it, to find the, and actually Saskia at the early stages when we were working on a certain idea of how the communication will work, worked with another person who was supposed to do all the posts in German. Uh, since then, I must say, 
we are succeeding in the German market, but we don't do a lot of communication that are pure in German. And as you have noticed, Saskia also helps me when I contact a person that lives in the south of California and uh, <laughs> has nothing to do with uh, German. Yeah. Yeah. But, but That's she's, just because she's, we work well. Yeah, but she plays such a critical role, right? Because obviously you and your husband run the company. Yes. And and you need someone you can trust that's reliable, that's going to represent you well, right? Yes. And I think this is a really tough hire. It's not really tough because you are putting a lot of trust into another individual, right? And it just shows like to her character and to her ability to not like you down, I think, right? Like I think that's usually the yeah. hardest part that I, that I would have, right? Because... I would assume that you would have a really high bar for like, hey, here's the autonomy that you need to have. Go forth and prosper. <laughs> Find and, me good and, I, <clears throat> and I want to tell you that I had other people trying to help me in marketing in small, so like a freelance marketeer that works part time. I did not have very good experience with them until I found Saskia. So how, how many uh, employees do you have today? Mm -hmm. How many employees do you have today? So we are six in the team full time. Okay. And then we have, a, in, in terms of the freelancers, we have a UX designer who works with us uh, ad hoc. Uh, I would have loved, loved, for example, to hire him full time. But what I discovered with UX designers is that they can design much more, much quicker than the developers can develop. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There is no point of having a full-time UX designer when you have four people in the development team and they are not able to just uh, produce turn, Yeah, code. they can't turn the picture into code that no, quickly. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. So it, it, it doesn't make sense, yes? Um, and uh, I have someone who helps me with uh, the video editing because we do some video promotion and, and uh, yes, but... Uh, make sure you give me all the links to everything so we can put them in the description of this video. Have Saskia okay. send it over. <laughs> okay, we'll do so. That would yeah. be great. Yeah, and then, <clears throat> so now let's pivot a little bit more than right. Um, team, so you said you were there. I didn't see you. Where were you? <laughs> ah, in Team 24? No, no, yeah. I was not there. Oh, I was you not didn't, there. Okay, okay. I, I thought I asked you earlier, I'm like, did you go to Team? And you're like, yes. I'm like, I'm like I don't, I could have sworn I would have made time to see no, you. No, no, I... If I would have gone, I would for sure uh, make myself uh, no. let's say visible to you. Yes, I'd, I'd come to say hi for sure. But uh, no, I was not going to to team. It was a, a let's say it, it's a very great uh, meeting. I was in team when it was in Barcelona. Mm. Uh, it's coming back they, again very soon, right? Barcelona. That's the rumor. That's a rumor. I don't know. I heard the rumor. This so week, one I of my customers I've, said. Hmm? I've seen uh, the Jura Life. We submitted a uh, submission for, we just wrote a book. Yes. Uh, we, we, Congratulations. Thank you. I have well, an idea for the book, by the way. Yeah, for a new book or that book? No, no, for that book, for that book. You need to do a book club. We, we've thought about it. So we met up with Brittany Joyner, tre the Trello Queen. And we came up with, with a list of like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 different ideas for how we're going to market the book. And a book club was on there. Yes. I have I, no idea I, how to do it. Do you, do you have any ideas? Like what would you recommend? So uh, we, um, we don't have currently, but we used to have a book club in our team. And that worked really well. So basically we would meet every two weeks. First of all, we'll select as a team a book that we all want to read, technical um, uh, related somehow. In nature, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then every two weeks, we will read the next chapter and convene for one hour to discuss that chapter. And uh, it helped uh, everybody read the book because uh, most of the technical books are pretty boring. I, <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a teacher when I was in uh, high school. The Oxford English Dictionary, unabridged. Wow. He had the whole set, and he he's like, folks, if you ever get if you ever stumble upon some money, get yourself an unabridged version of the uh, uh, Oxford English Dictionary, so you too can have fun on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine how many seventeen year olds would want to read the dictionary on a Friday night, <laughs> but. 
to each their own, I suppose. Sorry. <laughs> I just, no, no. when you said that dry, dryness of, of books, it reminded me of that little story. <laughs> no, I, I always say that you, you can read such a book for your bedtime. It will send you to bed very quickly. <laughs> no, no need well, for a sleeping pill. I mean, to, to my defense, I write the way I speak. So for at least the chapters in which I wrote, they'll sound a lot more like my YouTube video. So there's this per perky, like, you know, upbeat to it. Um, silliness, really, if you will. <laughs> but I try to tame it, right? Because it is also a professional book. <laughs> but I try to give it a little bit of character. So you knew, you knew it was me. I don't think that we put the names of who wrote the chapters. I have to go back and check, but I think I'd be kind of curious to maybe put like a poll on LinkedIn and go, which chapter was written by Alex? Which chapter was written by Bob? <laughs> For example, yes. yes. See, see, people can guess. <laughs> did you not have an editor? We did, but <clears throat> one of the things that we were, uh, one of the things that I thought we were going to do, because the reviewer, we had a reviewer who uh, his job is to write tech proposals for the government to to get contracts, right, for, for his company. And so one of the things he told me, he's like, hey, Alex, are you guys going to unify the voice? Because they go through a lot of edits to make sure that the voice sounds the same because they Absolutely. have 10 20, 10, 20 different people writing the proposal. And I'm like, I think we are, but I don't think at the end we did. So every chapter wow. has this uniqueness, so you can you should be able to tell who wrote what. Like we had an editor that kind of looked for like the grammatical stuff, the the logistics. So not the stylistic stuff. Not the stylistic. Yeah, we they let us keep our little little character part of it. <laughs> so you'll see four different characters in that book. <laughs> It'll be fun. I can't wait for it to come out. We'll have to sign you a copy and send it to you. Did it not come out? Because I saw it on LinkedIn. The pre-orders pre are out, but they, it ships uh, July, like in two weeks, I think July 19th or 16th or something like that. Okay, okay. And it's a hard copy. It's not only a, an electronic version. Correct. There will be a physical book that you can obtain. So that's why we're, we'll do the signatures. Yes. So I will, I will only wish you that it will be as successful as this one. I don't know if you have read this one. I have uh, I, I have the, the DevOps one as well. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think, and yours is also around DevOps. So you should be familiar with that. Yeah. That, so I did. <clears throat> it was an interesting book to write. Um, DevOps is something that I have been in since 20, ooh, I want to say since like 2013, 2014 timeframe. And so it's, it's played a key critical role in my career. I don't think a lot of people know, right? Because I mainly talk Jira. <laughs> And, and so a lot of people are usually surprised. They're like, Alex, because I also have a background in cybersecurity. Um, wow. I, I did a, I did all the cybersecurity certifications at one point because the company I worked at, they just, I had a limited education budget. So oh, I just, cool. I got everything I could learn when I was young. <laughs> now it's like, now I don't ever want to learn anything new ever. Now, again. now it's not a matter of budget. It's a matter of time, I think. It is. It's, it's such an interesting perspective as now it's just literally... If you, I wish I could show people my whiteboard that's like right behind my screens, but there's not an inch of white space on my whiteboard. And my wife, every time she comes in, she's like, "What? Are, what do we work on next? Right? What's next? Right?" I'm like, "Pick from the board. <laughs> there's a board <laughs> full, of, full of stuff." And then she's like, "Why isn't this in Jura?" And I'm like, "Don't get me started with that one." <laughs> well, it's okay. I I also live with my. Uh, I, Honestly, like I have a big paper for all my notes because <laughs> I there's something tangible about the pen and pencil absolutely. that I just absolutely yes. love. Yes. My wife hates it though because we have to work collaboratively. And so she comes in and forces me to put everything into Jira so that she can then because then she's like, You can't yell at me later when I don't do things, right? And I'm like, fine, I'll I'll give you that. Cause she's like, it's clear as day in here, <laughs> right? The oh, ideas absolutely. are up here. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, why isn't it done yet? She's like, when did you tell me? <laughs> so she's like, if you put it in Jira, it gets done. So now I just, now what I did one time, just being cynical, is like I put everything in Jira. I just dumped her, like 50 things. And now I go, why isn't it done? She's like, where's the Jira ticket? And I'm like, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem is to sustain it over time, to have this habit to write everything in Jira. So, yeah. Definitely, but to because I know we're definitely running out of time here. 
are you coming to team next year? I haven't made my plans yet. Uh -oh. it's, uh, so far, I, I mean, I, I don't I have a, a plan to go, but if uh, it will be. It's possible, with the mouse. You got to come over. The energy is just palpable. Yes. So the, 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 that I agree, meaning, especially on LinkedIn, you don't know how I drooled over the LinkedIn. FOMO, because the fear of missing out stuff. All of you were, were there. Yes. But uh, it's the uh, place to be if you're in the Alaskan ecosystem. You got to come to team. It's, yes. it's, it's energizing. It's so tiring. And even if you don't have a booth, because I don't think you need a booth, um, just networking with people, it's just... Yes. On the contrary, I think that a booth, if you don't have a big enough team, a booth is uh, just over-expanding yourself too much. Yeah. This year, though, at Lassen, did something very interesting. They did these things called pop-up booths. Okay. What, and, the, what way were they? So there were, because the booths, I don't know if you know, but you kind of have to donate a kidney to be able to afford them now. Yes. They're very expensive. <laughs> and they go from very, very big like very 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 big to very very small to like a chair like, yes. like the size of a chair <laughs> and um so they had all different types of sizes and some of them were like temporary stuff like that so it was an interesting concept i would i think if i had an app though i don't know that i would want a booth but at the same time it becomes really hard to market <laughs> yes so it, it really depends um uh... Let's say for some people, having a booth is part of their reputation, especially the big ones, the platinum ones, etc. They go there to be mm -hmm. seen, etc. Um, I, I think networking is super important. I went into some local uh, meetings here in Europe, and I find this effective and much less exhausting. Yeah, definitely talk to Vish. Ready? Yes, yeah. Vish Ready um, from yeah. Revive. Yeah, that guy... He, he knows. is phenomenal, huh? Yeah, he knows everything. So if you ever have some free time and you you want to talk to somebody that that's aggressively figuring out the Alaskan ecosystem, yes. Vish, is, Vish is someone you should sit down and talk with. Yes, okay. I have had a couple of talks with him, uh, but I, I agree that he looks like someone who I can spend even more time with. Yeah. Well, Rina, we are unfortunately out of time. I didn't even oh. get a chance to talk about your the groupie <laughs> so maybe we'll have to do a part two soon but thank you so much for your time thank you so much for for i i, I you're running this business right so taking time out of your busy day to chat with me thank and you. appreciate it and thank you. send me all the links we'll put everything down below and people hopefully go and uh, go get some juris snapshots all right well thank you very much rena appreciate you being thank here thank you bye bye and a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video nasa not another stand-up app Scrum Masters, check this app out if you want to take full control of your standups and guide your team to excellence with just one app. This is the most essential app that you can have in your Jira arsenal.